stop burning money. Electricity prices have gone through the roof recently and customers are all worried about how much it's going to cost them to get their electric bill paid at the end of each month. Yesterday, a customer told me that his bill is going up from £150 a month to £600 a month. What can we do? Well, at Artisan Electrics, we are on a mission to save our customers money and to help them stop burning stuff. So today, we're going on a road trip around the country, visiting various clients who want solar, battery storage, and electric vehicle charging points to be installed. We're gonna visit four sites, going to show you case by case how we can save our customers money and help them to stop burning stuff. So we're going to get going and see you over there. Oh. Yeah, oh, not bad for a new build. It's quite, quite nice and neat. They've even put the tails in a bit of flexible conduit. A ladder of death. So we've done a preliminary design for solar PV on this particular property. It's a five-year-old house, customer wants solar and battery storage and to be able to basically reduce massively their reliance on the grid. What we've got to do now is see whether the design that we've come up with from Google Earth, basically from some rough, rough measurements on Google Earth, is actually feasible with the proper physical measurements on the roof. I showed it the other day in a video, but I'm gonna actually do a comparison side by side now and see if doing it with an iPhone is just as good as doing it with <laughs> this expensive solar tool. So up here we can see that the pitch of the roof is 37 degrees, according to this tool. Now let me check with my iPhone using the free level uh, tool in the measurement app. And it's not far off, I say it's saying at 38 or 39 degrees. So it's pretty good. If you do have an iPhone and you want to use it to figure out the pitch of the roof, excellent little tip to, to use that. So I'm just measuring now the size of the roof essentially to make sure that the measurements that we got off Google Earth are actually accurate. So I'm measuring the gutter line, then I'll measure the top part and the length of the apex bit here. We should be able to do all the calculations to find out how many panels we can actually fit on the roof based on all of those measurements. I'll show you the drawing so you can see what it looks like. So this is the drawing that our designer has come up with. I think it's pushing it a little bit to get that number of panels on this roof, but until we've done the proper measurements we won't know for sure. torch back before I lose it. How many people have left these in lofts over the years? <laughs> little safety note about working in lofts. This one, insulation wise, is not bad. Probably always best to wear a mask anyway, but I'm only up for it here for a few minutes, so I'm not wearing a mask this time, but the biggest thing is don't fall through <laughs> the ceiling, basically. Let me know in the comments if you've ever fallen through a ceiling from a loft. I haven't yet but I've had a few co close calls and the basic thing is just make sure you tread on the joists, never tread on the plasterboard in between. So in general, where these are, they're fixed to a joist, you know, ceiling joist. So you can generally stand and put your feet where these are. So even if you can't see the ceiling joists, if you put your feet in line with these, usually you'll be okay. <laughs> Love lofts. One of my favourite places to work. It's so airy and cosy and... <coughs> so this is what's been designed. Um, I think these aren't going to be possible. The reason is there should be a 300 mil gap above and below, really, because you don't want the wind to catch the bottoms of the panels and uplift. Um, these ones I reckon will be okay. These ones maybe, but I've got to double check the length of those panels. So in order to do that, I can go and just check my panel measurements now and then see if those will fit based on my current measurements. 175 centimeters, basically 1,754 millimeters long. So it's really annoying, but we just don't have enough space. For these ones, I measured 1.7 meters there, but we need 1.75. Putting panels portrait on that part is just not going to be doable. Then for this one, 1.75 plus 1, that's 
they're, they're about one meter wide so that's two two point seven five meters we got two point eight meters of height so it's touch and go we need like that 30 centimeters really either side so we don't have enough space there so we're probably going to have to just get rid of the landscape ones along the top and just do a row of portrait panels and then these ones i think will be okay we might need to get rid of that yeah i think we will because we've got 1.6 meters there and it's 1.75 so again we need to get rid of that shift those three up we might be able to fit four widthwise there but i think it's going to be tight so unfortunately that means that the system as we designed it it's a, we've designed a five kilowatt system, but realistically it's gonna be more like a 3.68 kilowatt system, which might not be enough for what the customer wants, um, but we can talk it through with them and see what they say. Some solar is better than no solar at the end of the day. The 3.6 kilowatt system is still enough to run the kind of background electricity usage of a lot of houses and still save the customer quite a lot of money. All right, so what do you reckon guys? Neat or not neat? <laughs> This is the game that we're playing all the time, mate. This is a new build-ish, five years old. See if the builders, electricians took pride in their work or not. This is where I take the board cover off and it rips half the wall off because they've plastered it in or something. A big reveal. Ah. It just drives me insane how anyone can do a brand new consumer unit and make it look so rubbish. It's just so tragic. But, I mean, look at that, it's just like spaghetti, you know? Snake's wedding, rat's nest, whatever you want to call it. It's full of dust as well. They never hoovered it out after they did the um, initial construction. Much of a shame. This is what we expect of new builds now, unfortunately. So things that we want to consider here, we've got a few spare ways, three spare ways on the non-RCD side, one spare way on this RCD side, one spare way on this RCD side. They are type AC RCDs, so if we wanted to fit a new circuit, a solar battery or EV charger on one of those RCD sides we would need to upgrade the RCD to a type A RCD because type AC is not uh, not acceptable for loads that have any kind of DC leakage on them which most uh, stuff has electronics now. The customer says maybe they will want an EV charger over outside the garage at some point and that is a potential location as well for the battery and inverter so we'll have a quick look there and see how we might get a cable from here over to there. get a cable down here I think from the consumer unit potentially clip it down run it under the step here and then along oh and it started raining you know what it's not rained here in England for like weeks so I'm actually happy to see rain can you believe it so we could run it along here along there pop through into the garage and put everything in there I think that would be perfect so a potential location for the batteries is actually on the outside wall here. Obviously we'd have to clear some stuff. The customer wants backup power for the house. If we put it near the consumer unit, we could potentially even run the meter tails through and into the battery and have the whole house being backed up by the battery storage system in case of an emergency. That will take some, some figuring out though because there are things with the new regulations in Amendment 2 of the 18th edition wiring regulations like uh, re regarding prosumer installations, we have to put in an earth electrode for the property and we have to put some kind of contactor that would isolate the supply to the grid in the event of a power cut when it switches over to battery mode so that the house is running as an island effectively and is not connected to the grid, not possible to feed any power back to the grid and it's got its own earthing system to protect everything. So. That is definitely something that is gonna take a little bit of figuring out, but I think with the gravel here, we should be able to get an earth electrode in or even dig in one of those little earth mat uh, type things. I can't remember what it's called, but they're quite good. So that might be an option. As we can't fit as many panels on the roof, we're thinking maybe we could add a few on the garage to compensate. As you can see, sunny day, middle of the day, we've got quite a lot of sunshine on the garage roof. So that could be a good option. And if we're putting the inverter in the garage anyway, it's not gonna to be too difficult to pop a few panels on the garage roof. But why we're here really is because the customer wants an EV charging point on this wall here. So we're gonna include that as part of the design. And for that, again, if we have a DB in the garage, we should be able to just run the cable from the EV charger along low level into the garage, along here, into a dedicated distribution board, which will also feed the inverter and several batteries, depending on how much battery storage the client wants. 
I'll take some measurements of this roof now and we can add that onto the system and hopefully we'll still come out at about five kilowatts, which would be great. So this gives us the pitch, but it also gives us the irradiance in watts per meter squared. 703, 704 watts per meter squared, and the roof pitch is 28 degrees. So that will help us to calculate how much power we can actually get from putting panels on this roof. So we'll do the other side as well, and we'll see what the difference is between the different directions that we're facing, and see what the reduction in output is. Okay, so we've got pretty much the same, 710 watts per meter squared. So on both sides of the roof, even though we're facing different directions, it's pretty much the same. So here in the sun, sunlight, direct sunlight, you can see we've got 810 watts per meter squared. If I just move that into the shade, it drops off straight to zero, basically. And even part shading, if we're there, we're half in the shade and half in the, in the sun, it's right down to 200, 300, and then as soon as we get into the direct sunlight, it's right up to 900 and odd. So it really makes a difference, shading. And what we'd have to figure out with this roof really is, is it worth it with the amount of sunlight that it actually gets? Because I don't know how many hours of the day it's actually gonna get onto this roof. Uh, it's probably worth it, but we'll have to figure that out. So we're done here, on to the next survey. So here we are at our next site, a little bit of a different one, another solar and battery survey. Let's go and see the client and see what they want. Yabba dabba doo! <laughs> Banana Man, it's got to be the best, the best one. Memories. Ah, oh, yes. That is classic. Let us know in the comments what's your favourite old school TV programme from when you were a kid. I mean, it looks pretty decent, like, as roofs go. Yeah, there's a lot of timber up here, though, so I think from a structural point of view, it shouldn't be an issue to put panels on it. So this house has a lovely south-facing roof that you can see behind me. It's quite a nice, large, open roof, but there are a few tricky things about this one. One of them is it's a very old property. It's over 100 years old. Roof trusses are pretty ancient. And as you'll see from the roof, it's a little bit rickety. It's got these old rosemary tiles. They're easy to break, not so easy to source. But there are a few other things that make this quite a nice install. So I'll show you the mains position. So the electric meter and stuff here are actually quite an in quite an unusual place. It's, so it's a Victorian terraced house. We're end of terrace here. This is the neighbor's house, but actually there's this corridor in between the two properties and the meter, the main cutout fuse and a sub consumer unit are all here. We've got a feed with a 50 amp breaker that goes from this over to the main consumer unit in the house. Now the nice thing about this is there's quite a lot of space in here. So if you look, for example, behind me here, we've got this whole wall, you know, it's just where the bins are stored. Potentially a great place to put batteries and an inverter, or even on this wall here, you know, we've got loads of space, batteries won't stick out that much, inverter won't stick out that much. So it's an ideal place to run everything from. So that old rusty switch fuse is a little bit worrying. I have no idea whether it's still in use or not. Pretty rusty and dodgy. So it's time for that game again. Neat or not neat. <laughs> this is an absolute train wreck. Look at that. They have mushed the cables in. It looks like somebody's bashed them in with a hammer to be quite honest, to make them fit. Absolutely terrible. Lots of exposed copper there on the main switch and everything's all mushed in and not ideal. Well, another disappointing episode of neat or not neat. <laughs> so the customer's given us this, which is actually a broken tile that's fallen off the roof, just so that we've got a sample of the kind of tiles that they've got here. And it is what's called a rosemary tile. You can actually see it printed on the back here. They're quite old. Um, they do get brittle, pretty solid and heavy to be fair. Um, because they're small and old, 
it does add a certain level of complication to the installation. So it's something that we need to take into consideration when we're planning the job. Ugh, I think I'm stuck. <laughs> oh. Welcome back to another episode of Being in Strange Lofts. And here we're in this lovely old loft full of old timbers, dust, lead pipes and other wonders. So let me show you what's around here and we're gonna measure up, see how many solar panels we can fit on this roof. So I'm gonna just first of all get the pitch of the roof. So we've got a 33 degree pitch. What is the ideal pitch for solar? Let me know the answer in the comments below. Now what we're gonna do is measure the full length of the roof. Now the nice thing about this is it's a very standard roof in terms of the top um, ridge line is the same length as the gutter line. So it's a very nice square sort of space for us to work with. And I'll say to you, if you're looking to get solar and you've got a roof like this, it's absolutely ideal. If you've got a roof that's kind of a funny shape, it's a lot more complicated. So this is an old lead pipe. Um, I think it's the old water supply for the water tank. Very, very old, probably from when the house was built over a hundred years ago. And then there's this steel water pipe that comes out. I think that might be the overflow potentially, but if you're a plumber and you know about old pipes, let us know in the comments what those are for. It doesn't look like that tank's in use anymore because there is a plastic tank over here, but they've just left it in place and it's an old wooden clad tank. You know, they're pretty much as they were when the house was first built. Somebody has used some lawnmower flex to wire up their own loft light on a plug top and they split out into two lights. So they've put this connector, they've just screwed it. Obviously, you know, all the connections are exposed. Somebody just could just get a shock. And then that out, it goes in with the power from the plug and then out to two little lights, one up there and one over there. All wired in orange lawnmower flex. Not a good idea. Get you some emails over with the quotes and things in the next week or so. Okay. Yeah. That was a nice little visit. On to the next one. We're in front of a massive solar array. <laughs> We're back here at the job that you might remember we did about a year ago where we installed a My Energy Zappy charging point to charge off pure solar from this huge solar array that our customer has. Well, now we're back to size up a battery for them because they've had a heat pump installed, that old oil boiler that you might remember where we were sweating away in the cupboard, that's been ripped out. They've got a beautiful new three phase heat pump system. Now they want to add battery storage because they're still exporting a heck of a lot of electricity to the grid at the moment, whereas they could be using it to run their house overnight. So we're having a look at the panels as well while we're here, but I'm gonna go inside and show you the heat pump. It's absolutely beautiful. And then we're gonna talk about how we're gonna size the battery system to be just right for the customer and how we're gonna do the installation. So we've got 116 255 watt panels here, which generates a huge 30 kilowatts of energy on a sunny day. And it's a big house, it's a big farmhouse, but they're still not able to use all of that energy. So how do you leverage that and make the best use of it when you can? You install battery storage. This will produce in one hour what a normal house will, will use in two days. Nice to be back at one of our old jobs. It's very satisfying to see how neat a job we did, really. You always, like, in the heat of the day and stuff, it was like, it was a mad job, this. You know, we'll go and watch the video. I'll leave a link up here where you can watch that. But it was a mad, it was a mad job. We've got a 100 amp three-phase supply going into this three-phase meter, from there into a main isolator switch, from there into this Henley block, which feeds various consumer units. We put a three phase surge protection device when we were here last. So it's got SPD, which is fantastic. We also put in this brand new Eaton Mem Shield board because we installed the three phase circuit for the EV charger. We also installed a spare for the heat pump, which has now been used. And then we fed the other distribution boards from here, but we have still a spare three phase way which is ideal for us to run the battery storage from. For the solar side, this armoured cable is what goes out to feed those inverters 
and so the power is essentially coming in from the solar into this isolator you can shut that isolator off it's coming in through these tails into this solar check meter um, these CTs are the my energy CTs which are giving all the data to the Zappi of how much solar is being produced and then we've got CTs down here which is monitoring the reliance on the grid so we've got all the data we need now to size the battery because we did this install one year ago so we've got one year's worth of usage data now for the house which means we know exactly how much generation they have how much power they're using from the grid how much power the house is consuming and we can size the perfect size battery for them so here's a garage where we fitted the zappi they've got a nice id3 uh, sorry id4 volkswagen id4 which is uh, what they were waiting for for quite a while and the zappi the great thing about it is we can see on the menu here what's happening so the house is currently using 3.9 kilowatts of energy solar is producing 2.5 and actually 6.8 is going out to the grid that is per phase right so i think that's why the amount that's being exported appears to be more than is being generated and we can actually get the ct readings if we look at this see it says we're exporting 2018 I mean it's jumping around all over the place obviously as the sun goes behind the clouds it goes down but exporting 15 17 20 22 kilowatts I mean that's insane you know 25 kilowatts now of export which is just huge they're basically giving free energy to their neighbors who are actually paying for it so they're giving free energy to their energy supplier really and it is like burning money when you could be using it rather than buying energy back from the grid at night you could be storing that energy in a battery and then using that energy that you've generated to run your house overnight and that's what we want to help our customer to do So this is where the batteries will potentially go. Now we've got the heat pump gear all on this side. Absolutely beautiful install by um, the company who did it. Looks fantastic, very, very nice and neat. So it's good to see somebody taking pride in their work. And the customer has very cleverly and kindly left a whole big wall here for us to put the battery storage on. The other good thing, other than us having lots of space, is right above me is a loft hatch. And that loft space goes straight the way through to where the distribution board is. We could just come up through the loft and drop down into that distribution board that I showed you earlier and then run all of the uh, battery system off that new circuit that we can install. So the actual install should be fairly nice and easy, which is a nice change for us. I'm gonna just measure this wall, make sure we know exactly how much space we've got, work out a rough cable length going back to the board, and then we can size up the battery system according to the customer's need. So it's going to be a nice little job that, looking forward to that one. We've got some other work to do around in the garages and things as well. So uh, yeah, back on the farm is always nice. Next, we're going to a commercial electric vehicle charging install. So we'll see you over there. So we're here at a really cool place here at Kempe in Bedford. They do welding machines, some really amazing high quality welding machines. They've asked us to come in initially just to quote for an electric vehicle charging point. But actually now that I've arrived, customers already asking about solar battery storage and lighting upgrades to try and get this building running more efficiently save them on their running costs at the moment they're heating the building with gas which is costing them a fortune as you can imagine and they're burning stuff which is what we want to try and avoid so they're going to be looking at getting a heat pump installed for the heating side we're going to look at getting an EV charger because they've got an electric vehicle on its way, but we're also going to look at solar on the roof, battery storage to back that up and changing as many lights over to LED as we can to get this building a lot more energy efficient. So let's have a wander and see what we can find. Here we've got fluorescent lights at the moment. So we've got 4, 8, 
12 fluorescent lights and we'll look at changing these to LED as well. Six foot twin IP rated. So we'll change those. Four, eight, 12. So in this big warehouse area, they've got these high bay lights that are currently metal halide or something like that. They use a lot of energy and the lamps blow from time to time and end up needing a cherry picker to go up and replace them. So changing over to LED lights will massively reduce maintenance and reduce energy costs. It's kind of a no-brainer to save money. So we're here in the mains room and this is kind of the heart of the electrical and mechanical installation. So behind me in the corner, for example, you'll see the big old hideous gas boiler. It's about 20 years old. They say it keeps going wrong all the time. So that's why they're looking into getting a heat pump installed as well, which would be more energy efficient. We've got a big three-phase supply coming into the property. So that's good. And the main panel board is down here. And then from there, it feeds these various distribution boards and other distribution boards throughout the site. Now in terms of the EV charger that we're going to install, we've got this board which has got loads of spare ways, which is fantastic. They've recently had an EICR done, so in terms of the existing electrical installation it is in fairly good condition. And we've got spare ways, so we could potentially run a cable from here through this trunking. We've got um, a MATI device we will need because they want a Tesla charging point. So we'll need to fit a three-phase MATI device under here somewhere. And then we could run the cable along the wall down here through the wall. And then we're gonna have to bury it a little bit outside so that we put the Tesla charger on a pedestal next to the parking bay. So in terms of cable route, it's not a long one here, which is nice. The mains room is just on the other side of this wall. So where I said about to come through, it will probably come through about here. Then we can just get a duct dug in along here somewhere under these paving stones. And then potentially we can put a pedestal here so that the charging point can be there uh, in the right location for the Tesla. Now actually, so they've got a Tesla Model Y on order for a company car. The charging point, if they're reversing in, will be on this side. I would be tempted to put the charging point here anyway so that it can service either of these two bays if needed. Uh, and then you've also got the pedestal there as an option you could always put a second charger on the other side. So that's nice. And then if we're running a duct here, we can also run a duct over to here so that we could add an additional charging point later. They've got three bays here, so they could have three charging points. And that would just make best use of our time when we're doing digging and groundworks. Now for the solar, they've got a massive roof. It's a south facing roof, which is perfect. They could put quite a large number of panels on there and combined with battery storage, significantly reduce their reliance on the electricity grid. So we're gonna measure up while we're here to see how many panels we can fit on the roof and what is the best way of doing the solar PV system for them so that we can give them a quote for that as well. Try not to crash it this time. If you haven't seen the moment where I crashed the drone last, what have you been doing with your life? Make sure you head over and watch the Corey I Quit video, one of our most epic videos of recent days. And I did in fact crash the drone, which made for some entertaining viewing, shall we say. Oh look, there's a red kite. He's trying to attack my drone, look. Battle, red kite versus drone. Who will win? So, what a fun day. I hope you've enjoyed joining us for all of these amazing surveys, solar, battery, EV, the whole renewables package could save a ton of money. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also after this, there'll be a few other videos that YouTube will recommend to you from our channel that you might enjoy too. So why not grab a cup of tea, sit back and watch a few more. Either way, we really appreciate you joining us. Let us know all your thoughts in the comments below and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching and have a great day.
probably that little bit in the loft. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to working with these kind of ladders, that's my excuse. <laughs> 